Almighty God, we pray for your blessing. Prosper its work for the advancement and benefit of its people, so that peace and happiness, unity and justice may be established amongst us all. Amen. Amen. Manningham Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri Wurrung people as the traditional owners of lands and waterways, now known as Manningham. Council pays respect to Elders past, present and emerging and values the ongoing contribution to enrich and appreciate the cultural heritage of Manningham. Council acknowledges and respects Australia's first people as traditional owners of lands and waterways across country and acknowledges and encourages reconciliation between all. Manningham Council also like to acknowledge the contribution made to people by, of diverse backgrounds and cultures. I welcome all members of the public joining us online this evening to observe the proceedings. With the further easing of restrictions, we hope to return, the council hope to, return to the council chamber in person in December. We will keep you up to date on any changes to meeting arrangements on our website and social media channels. As with all council meetings, we are taking questions from the public and encourage you to submit your questions in accordance with our normal practice. Our CEO will read out any questions received tonight and a response will be provided where we have the information to hand. If we're unable to provide a meaningful response, we will take your question on notice and provide a response in writing. We will deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any issue. If you have any more than two questions, please submit these additional questions in writing through normal channels. Council meetings are conducted in accordance with our governance rules. I will introduce each item of business as listed on the agenda, calling it by number and by reading the title. I will then call for a mover and a seconder of the motion on the item before opening any debate. All councillors are able to join the debate on any item. Councillors may adopt the officer's recommendation in the report or propose amendments or supplementary and supplementary motions. Item number two, apologies and requests for leave of absence. There are no apologies. Item number three, Prior notification of conflict of interest. No prior notifications of conflict of interest have been received. Councillor, would councillors, would anyone like to give a notice of conflict of interest? No. Item number four, confirmation of minutes. Do I have a mover? I'd like to. Councillor Conlon. I'd like to move that the council meeting minutes held on 26th of October 2021 and the annual council meeting, meeting minutes held on 4th of November 2021 be confirmed. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? I second the motion. Councillor Diamonte. Councillor Conyon? No. Councillor Diamonte. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Passed. Item number five, presentations. I have one presentation. So councillors, the Australian Institute of Landscape Architects recently announced the winners of the 2021 Landscape Architecture Awards. I'm proud to say that Tullamore Southern Gully Reserve and the team at MDG Landscape Architects won the Landscape Architecture Award in the parks and open space category. The award citation reads, Tullamore Southern Gully Reserve feels like an established suburban community asset as the retention of its existing trees has allowed this parkland to have the character of a much older site. The leadership qualities of the landscape design team have resulted in a high quality, people-centric outcome. The project is notable for its sensitive treatment of topography and the integration of water quality and overland flow issues sets this project apart from more conventional developments. The multitude of different recreational opportunities within the reserve extends its value to the community. Congratulations to all involved in this project 
for creating a beautiful open space for the residents of Manningham. Item number six, petitions. 6.1 petitions, tables, benches and barbecues at Zerby's Reserve Waldo Ward. Do I have a mover? Councillor Chen. Uh, I move that the petition with nine signatories from the residents of Manningham requesting more tables, benches and barbecues at Zerby's Reserve from Castle East be received and referred to, to the appropriate officer for consideration. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Goff. Councillor Chen? Thank you. Councillor Goff? I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's unanimously carried. Item number seven, public question time. We have received a couple of questions for tonight's council meeting. At this time, anyone submitting questions to council will have their questions read out by our CEO. Our first question tonight is from Mrs Meg Downey. Thank you, Mayor. Fireworks cause a lot of distress to animals, leading to dogs escaping as well to our environment. When, council, when will Council abolish fireworks at the Carrolls and replace them with something with no noise and more environmentally friendly, such as a laser show as Melbourne City Council? I'll refer that to Mr Niall Shee, Acting Director of City Planning and Community, to respond. Thank you, Ms Downey, for your question. Preparation of this year's carols at Ruffey Park commenced some time ago. The long preparation time is required to ensure the event is carried out safely and also successfully. This year's event will have fireworks to celebrate the occasion. However, post-event officers will consider your suggestion as part of the post-event analysis. As per previous years, dog owners in the vicinity of the event will be notified via SMS of the event, and which will also identify that the event has got fireworks and uh, provide appropriate messaging in regards to keeping their animals uh, indoors or under control during the event. Thank you. And the second question is, I'm concerned that council meetings are closed to the public attendance. Why is Manningham being so cautious? Are all officers and councillors vaccinated? I'll ask Mr Andrew McMaster, Group Manager of Governance and Risk, to respond. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mrs Downey, for your question. Uh, Manningham Council has always taken a safe approach to COVID-19 management, acting in accordance with directions from the Chief Health Officer and the Department of Health. Notices for this meeting were published prior to the winding back of restrictions last week, but we look forward to being open for our, meeting, for our December meeting. It is not appropriate for me to comment upon any individual's vaccine status, as this is a personal health matter. The state government has mandated that all council staff be vaccinated in order to work outside their homes, and systems and processes have been implemented to ensure we are compliant with this requirement. Thank you. Item number eight, admission of urgent business. There are no items of urgent business. Item number nine, planning permit applications. We have one planning, per planning permit applications 9.1 planning application PLA 20-0143 at 23 to 29 Park Street Templestowe Lower Templestowe Hotel for an amendment to planning permit PL 15-025406 for partial demolition and the construction of building and works to the southern facade construction of decks Closing the balcony to the north of the building, variation to the red line area for serving of liquor, internally illuminated business identification signage, vis vis veg sorry, vegetation removal, an amendment to the permit permeable and the addition of a new condition to the permit. Do I have a mover? 
Councillor um, Stephen Main. Mayor, I'd like to move an alternative motion that the officer's recommendation be adopted with the following additional conditions. Uh, a, after condition 27, insert a new heading titled completion and insert the following two new conditions. 28, before the development authorised by amendment to planning permit PLA 20 dash slash 0143 starts a new 2.5 metre high brick fence on the common boundary between the subject land and 23 Ruppy Street, Templestowe Lower, as required by condition 1.9 of this permit, must be completed to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. And 29, before the approved uses commence, all development required by this permit must be completed to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. And B, the remaining conditions be renumbered accordingly. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? A second the motion. Councillor Lang. Councillor Stephen Main. Okay, thanks, Mayor. So um, this is quite a long uh, story, the, uh, the, the permit application related to the Temples Hotel. It goes back, I think the application was first submitted in, in 2015. I think the applicant had, had in mind a, a stage one and a later stage two. And we've ended up with a combined uh, uh, permit application, uh, which we're dealing with um, tonight. Uh, now, the officers are recommendation, recommending that a permit uh, be issued. Uh, the substantive uh, element of the application is the uh, construction of an elevated decking facility at the northern rear of the property. Um, and, uh, and the removal of previous plans, which was to construct a, conf a conference facility in the basement of the facility. Um, the Temple's Hotel is one of the most historic venues and buildings in Manningham, having first been opened <coughs> in 1868. It has heritage protection, which always leads to very close scrutiny of any proposed changes or renovations. Um, and this application was called in uh, by councillors after listening to the significant concerns of some of the neighbouring residents. Uh, but in light of the significant conditions that the officers are proposing, I believe it's appropriate to approve the awarding of a permit uh, as proposed with the addition of the, those two amendments, which I read out short, just before. Um, so in previous applications, uh, permit applications, the neighbouring property at 23 Ruppy Street, owned by Ms Cynthia Wade, has been promised the construction of a new 2.5 metre brick fence as a buffer between it and the hotel. But this hasn't materialised. Um, so in order to make sure this happens, we've inserted an additional condition which effectively requires this wall to be constructed before any other construction work commences. So it's, it's simply a sequencing question which says, please uh, uh, deal with this, this promised permit condition previously first before you construct anything else. And along the same vein, we're also requiring that all other conditions on the permit are satisfied before the approved use, primarily the new outdoor decking facility, can be opened for patronage. So that basically says you need to get everything right, and there are quite a lot of uh, permits proposed by the officers before we can open up this uh, sensitive new outdoor decking area, which is in relatively close proximity. Um, to some of the neighbours. So it's important, to, I think, to focus on some of the conditions proposed. Uh, the applicant initially was hoping to operate uh, until uh, one o'clock uh, every night. Um, and we've actually, the officers have proposed a condition which says that the outdoor decking area must be enclosed after 10 p.m. Uh, every night. So basically it ceases being an outdoor decking area at 10 o'clock every night. Uh, and it will only operate till 1 p.m. on Friday and Saturday night. Uh, being enclosed from 10pm on those, on those nights. Um, the, the noise issues are sensitive, so Council commissioned its own acoustic report, uh, and this led to the important condition that the decked area um, remains enclosed and that we will need a subsequent um, acoustic report just to make sure that um, the noise limit is proposed, because we're talking about an 88 decibel limit, um, will actually be, be followed. We're also, Council is requiring a very detailed management plan to be submitted and approved, dealing with all sorts of issues from security staffing uh, to how antisocial behaviour will be, will be contained, complaint handling. Um, and again, the facility cannot open until the council officers sign off on the management plan. So if this permit is approved, uh, there will be 88 patrons on deck one and 54 on deck two for a total of 142. But another important permit condition is that there won't be more than 300 patrons across the whole of the uh, facility. So um, that's uh, limitations on the decks and in the broader, the broader uh, whole facility. 
This has been a long process when you consider that it was six years ago that the permit conditions were, the, the first application was received. I would like to thank the officers, particularly Daniel Yu and, and Michelle West, for their patient and very detailed work on this application. I do think that the detailed conditions proposed do adequately address the concerns within the overall requirements of the planning scheme. I'd like to thank the submitters. We had nine submissions from six different neighbours over the two different uh, uh, advertising processes. Uh, and I very much hope that Cynthia Wade, who's waited very patiently for her new brick wall, the rear of her property at 23 Ruffy Street, will get some satisfaction from this outcome. And I very much hope that the neighbours and the pub can coexist relatively harmoniously uh, in the period ahead and do wish the applicant all the best with creating a popular social destination with the new outdoor decking with nice views uh, that will prove popular with the community whilst not causing any uh, loss of amenity for the very nearby located neighbours. Thank you, Councillor Stephen Main. Councillor Carly Lang. Nothing to add, Mayor. Okay. Any speakers against? No? I'll put that to a vote. Those in favour? That's unanimously carried. Pass. Item 10, City Planning and Community, 10.1, Placemaking Framework. Do I have a mover? Councillor Laura Main. I move that the, that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Councillor uh, Seconder. Councillor Lightbody. Councillor Laura Main. Thanks, Mr. Um, thanks Mayor. Um, this framework is about creating quality places for people to live, work, play and learn. Um, we can understand with the impacts of COVID on both traders and businesses who have suffered um, significantly financially, as well as our community as a whole, in terms of feeling connected and welcome back um, after lockdowns have been lifted, as, connect as connection between people and places is the heart of what placemaking is. Um, this framework looks at buying local, reducing travel time, creating 20-minute neighbourhoods, and a heightened awareness on sustainability goals, such as um, waste management, recycling, safe and easy navig easily navigated footpaths and the importance of shade, um, shade and trees. Over the past 12 months, some of the initiative council has undertaken include 33 activations at Jackson's Court, including three community art projects, all created by local artists um, in collaboration with school kids, some on the public toilet, like a, a big mural that, that says together that it's the cover of this framework. Um, as well as 30 local hospitality community collaborations, development of the Wonga Park Cottage, upgrade, upgrades to the Air Street Shopping, um, Air Street Strop, shopping Strip, um, four temporary pop-up parks and the reuse of some of those features and much more. Some of the short-term strategies in this framework include streamlining permit, um, permit approval, um, provision to outdoor furniture, accessing state funding available, and some of the more longer term goals include activating urban villages such as Air Street, um, having community led initiatives and growth in public art and creative community initiatives. So I'd just like to thank the officers for their work, especially Ellen, um, yeah, for both their work in the area and putting this framework together. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Lightbody, nothing to add? Any other speakers? Against? Uh, speaker, may I, may I, speaker, they're against. No, may I ask a question, please? You may ask a question. Thank you. And my question is, Mayor, and there are a number of short-term strategies listed in paragraph three point four, and one of the strategies is waiving fees for extending roadside trading permits. And I just want to see some clarification from the officers that is it. No, uh, is it for past trading? And if it is for past trading, and what are we going to manage the conflict between trading, uh, traders and the pedestrian walk away? And because we have been receiving complaints about traders ignore the minimum 1.5 meters wide walk away, uh, walkway to provide unobstructed pedestrian movement. And I just want to see some clarification whether, basically, whether that uh, roadside trading is good past trading. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. I'm going to refer that to uh, Mr Noel Shee, Acting Director of City Planning and Community, to respond. Through the Chair, uh, thank you, Councillor Chen, for your question. Reference in um, 
part 3.5 of uh, the officer's report refers to the options available under the framework, which includes um, roadside trading. At present, uh, council officers issue permits for footpath trading. Under the footpath trading guidelines, a minimum distance of 1.5 metres is required between the shop frontage and any area of use, such as a outdoor dining area or a display area. So the 1.5 metre requirement as per our existing guidelines would apply both to existing provisions as well as any other initiative introduced under the framework. Thank you. Any speakers against? No? I'll put that then to a vote. All those in favour? Unanimously carried. Item 10.2, Whitehorse Manningham Library Annual Report 2020-2021. Do I have a mover? So moved, Madam Mayor. Councillor Stephen Main. Do I have a seconder? So moved, Councillor Jeff Goff. Councillor Stephen Main. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, so traditionally, uh, we didn't bring the annual report of the uh, Whitehorse Manningham Library Corporation to Council, but we started last year and we're continuing it this year, the idea being that uh, the library joint venture with Whitehorse is a very big material part of Council's operations. We spend $3.93 funding the operations in the last year and also obviously have four of our library facilities uh, within the corporation. And it deserves the prominence and attention that uh, the, the relatively modest thing of, of council approving and noting the annual report um, at a council meeting. Um, unfortunately, with our library service, we did have a very disrupted year, like so much else of council due to COVID. Uh, but ple I'm pleased to report that the libraries have fully reopened as of November 15. During the year, we had the pivot to online, uh, Zoom meetings, uh, click and collect, and all those other nimble steps that had to be taken when you can't open the doors uh, because of uh, COVID. As I mentioned, we contributed 3.93 million of the total funding of 9 million with Whitehorse contributing uh, about 5 million because they've got a slightly bigger um, catchment and, and population than Manningham does. The annual report does note quite bluntly, to be honest, that uh, some of our infrastructure is ageing and out of date and that the time is coming for member councils to step up and renew some of the facilities. Um, we've got the four facilities, obviously Warrandyte and Doncaster are our relatively new facilities and Bulleen and the Pines are our relatively old facilities which are uh, rented facilities uh, in, uh, in shopping centres. Um, the new Local Government Act gives councils 10 years from the proclamation of the Act to collapse these joint venture corporation structures. The state government has said we're not allowed to anymore have a corporation structure uh, with multiple councils. So we'll have to come up with some other form of, of governance model, uh, a less sort of uh, regulatory heavy. Um, it might be go it alone, it might be uh, operating in a, in a, in a not-for-profit model with, with other councils. Um, and so we're in the early stages of, of doing that review. Um, and I certainly hope that by the end of this term, we will have settled on uh, the governance model for the library corporation and potentially even the, um, the, the operating structure. Uh, the marriage with Whitehorse is going well. We've had a, I've only had 12 months on the board, but we've had a good constructive um, year working with Whitehorse. Um, there is a, a sentiment that some people feel if it ain't broke, uh, don't fix it. Uh, some of our neighbours, like Boorundurra, run a standalone service, so does the City of Melbourne, whereas Geelong has got a service with four other councils in board. There's five of them in total, running all the way down to Colac Otway. So the annual report notes, and I'm signalling that, that there are some big decisions to be made with our library service um, uh, going forward. And uh, I'd, I'd, I serve on the board with the, the, mayor, with the, the mayor at the moment, and we've got two uh, councillors from Whitehorse, and we've been very ably led by... Whitehorse councillor Trudy Skillbeck over the past year. Uh, and I'd like to specifically thank her. She's been an excellent chair. And I'd also like to thank Lee Robson, our group manager of community programs, who also sits on the board and has very much driven the strategic review process um, at the officer level. Just a couple of fun facts from the annual report. We did 5,550 home deliveries of books in 2021. 
127,000 e-book loans. Uh, membership was up. Uh, we had 8,000 new members, and membership is 102,606, which is a very big number. 102,606 members across those two councils, and we have 4 million catalogue searches. So it's a very popular and well-used uh, service, even if it's not noisy and doesn't have everyone talking about it all the time. The community loves it and they use it. Fingers crossed we can stay, stay open. Um, I'd like to also thank Sally Both, the CEO of the Library Corporation, and her management team for providing very nimble, uh, inclusive and sensible leadership, particularly over the last two years, which has been an extraordinarily difficult time. Uh, when with the library service has been constantly opening and closing uh, because of COVID. But I, I personally would like to thank them for I, I feel very capably managing through to keep the library service open and to keep the numbers very high, obviously pivoting to the, the, the Zoom online click and collect model. Thank you, Councillor Main. Councillor Goff? No, Madam Mayor, I think uh, my time was given across. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Goff. Any speakers against? I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Item 11, City Services, 11.1, .1, Anderson Park Master Plan Draft. Do I have a mover? Councillor Chen. Madam Mayor, I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Madam Mayor, I second. Councillor Lang. Councillor Chen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Anderson Park is within walking distance of the Pines Shopping Centre. It offers both sporting and biodiversity conservation. The endangered vegetation there is considered a high priority bushland reserve. And the park also has very good access to buses. I think there are at least four rules you can just get to the uh, Anderson Park Reserve. The 2011 Pines Activity Center structure plan included an action to develop a management plan for Anderson Park. Unfortunately, it did not eventuate. The area has since transformed significantly in the past 10 years. The surrounding area has been transforming to higher density residential developments, and there are aged care facilities around, adjacent to the reserve. It is critical now to have a master plan developed to guide the future development of this very, very important park. In response to this, a draft Anderson Park master plan has been developed to guide the future development within Anderson Park. An endorsed master plan may also be able to attract state and federal funding. The draft master plan was not developed in a vacuum. It was produced as a result of feedback and input from expert consultants, internal and community, and a number of actions as a result of the feedback were proposed such as converting the southern soccer pitch to synthetic turf, upgrading sports field foot lighting, improving connectivity through uh, construction of a pass network around the reserve, and uh, including formalizing the entry from St. James Court. There are also construction of a new playground proposed, construction of a new public toilet, and retention and enhancement of the bushland areas. If the draft plan is endorsed tonight, Council will commence the very important consultation process and the final master plan will be presented to Council for endorsement in early 2022. So this is the master plan that has been long outstanding and I wish that our fellow councillors can endorse the draft I repeat, only a draft tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Councillor Lang, anything to add? Nothing further to add, Madam Mayor. Do I have any speakers against? I'll put that to a vote. Uh, speakers like against? 
Uh, yep, yeah, speakers. Any speakers for? Um, I'd just like to say that I'm happy for this plan to go out to community consultation, and I'd also like to thank the officers for the report and note the increased walking paths through the reserve, as well as the rejuvenation of the bushland section of the park. But I would also like to raise a number of concerns with the increasing installation of AstroTurf across Manningham and Melbourne. Uh, these include, but are not limited to, <laughs> um, the increased landfill at the end of life of these materials, as it is my understanding that there's no facility in Australia that currently recycles it due to the costs involved, as well as the increase in the urban heat island effect potentially for local residents. And while it appears that it may conserve water, the situation is a bit more complex when you consider um, the life cycle of the um, grounds as well as the irrigation needed to reduce the heat of the surface for its playability, especially in summer, as well as more information on the costs and maintenance of replacing it over every coming decade and the potential of reduction in types of activities that this space may be used for in the future. But the mayor, uh, point of order. What's your point of order, Councillor Chen? And I think that what I have heard was improper and irrelevant because uh, I, have, uh, I have mentioned that before. There is a draft and that will go out to public consultation. And if we have any comments and opinion on the draft prepared by after the feedback and input from consultants and community as, uh, uh, as whole, and I think that the community will have a feeling that councillors will not, uh, is not going to have an open mind and open to all those feedback and then make an informed decision. So I, uh, for that reason, I will have I have my concern and I will hope that the point of order can be sustained. Can I just Thank do you. a point of order on the point of order? <laughs> what was your point of order? We've got yeah. four things. It's improper to to uh, to present. Uh, a council's individual opinion here, and also I think that that is irrelevant here because that is going to I be okay. So, but I will leave it to Madam Mayor to rule. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to um, uh, dismiss the point of order. Councillor Goff, anything? No, no, no I, I don't know that. No, no. My point of order is you've got to actually have a reason. It's either misrepresentation. We've got it set no. out in our, our meeting schedule. There are, there are four yeah, things, I, and it doesn't I, fit one of them. Yeah, uh, I repeat that. That one yep. of the four is improper and also irrelevant and also as, as well as misleading because there's the open, um, open, uh, open comments and there are different opinions. So, Councillor Chen, I've just ruled that I'm going to dismiss that um, point of order. So, I think uh, how... how how long I've has just got, I haven't got any. I've just got, got a little bit left. Okay. Um, I was just going to say that I hope that the following consultation process continues to explore these issues, and as well as the impact on the increasing number of local residents in the Pines area, um, as the population increases, and we've seen that the access to open green space has been vital to communities well being through COVID as well. Okay. Thank you. Any speakers yeah. against the motion? Any speakers for the motion? Councillor Chen, I'll give you the opportunity if you'd like to close. There's been no there's been no opposition to the the motion. But you can close. Yes. Uh, yeah, I heard I just want to repeat it again. This is a long outstanding uh, master plan and then uh, we just got a uh, the issues that raised uh, on the table just uh, is never black and white, and uh, it all depends on a lot of considerations and uh, issues that we need to explore further. And basically, the I, I will rather hope that we won't raise any issues that will impede the community uh, consultations. And I think that they are well, any opinions they raise will not be taken seriously. So uh, I'm happy to accept that, I just leave it as is. And just once again, just ir irritate to the community that we always have an open mind and we wanted to take every considerations 
on board just to make an informed decision. So every single opinion is very important to this important master plan. Yeah, that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. I'll put that now to a vote. Those in favour? Unanimously carried. 11.2, Rundle Road West, proposed road closure. Do I have a mover? Madam Mayor, I um, move that the recommendation be adopted. Councillor Lang. Do I have a seconder? I'd like to second that. Councillor Conlon. Conlon. Sorry. Councillor Lang. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, councillors, the Arundel Road West issue has gone on long enough for the community and has caused some conflict within the Park Orchards residents, who now require us to make a decision. It is time for their healing, especially as they come out of lockdown and into this Christmas period. Therefore, I'm reminding us of the primary objective, to address the safety concerns of pedestrians and cyclists on Arundel Road West, mixing with non-local traffic which may be unaware of the nature of the road environment. Therefore, the intent is safety mitigation for our pedestrian and cyclists who use Arundel Road West as an access route. After listening to the community's opinions and submissions regarding Arundel Road West, it has come clear that this once private road, now local access only road, is key for the community to access on foot, by scooters, on bikes, in groups, to connect them to their local schools, townships, sports fields and recreation reserves. Arundel Road West is a mixed use, narrow 4.8 metre wide, short 425 metre carriageway, with chicanes, speed bumps and road narrowing signalled local traffic only at both ends, with no footpath but a flattened road reserve for pedestrian use. And, as the crow flies, a direct shorter access to all local amenities. Therefore, officers note that the traffic and safety concerns originally and historically raised by residents have merit, and a form of traffic management treatment is required to address these concerns along Arundel Road West. To provide safety for the mixed use, origin officers originally recommended a full road closure of Arundel Road at the Park Road intersection, and Council, in principle, suggested removing the vehicular component, enabling this safe access for all of Park Orchard's community. However, through the community consultation as part of the statutory process, it was deemed there was insufficient support for the proposal of a full road closure of Arunda Road West. Therefore, after a deferred motion, extended thorough investigation of all possible traffic mitigation measures, extra community consultation to understand the use and the value of Arundel Road to residents and the broader community, and considering the difficulties associated with the construction of a footpath along Arundel Road West, and the available ample road reserve to pedestrians to walk and ride along. Officers with tremendous research have made a recommendation to partially close Arundel Road West at Knees Road intersection, allowing emergency truck and cycle access only. This motion addresses the traffic safety concerns raised by the community and I encourage my fellow councillors to support the officers' um, thorough researched and community engaged recommendation by voting for the partial road closure of Arundel Road West at Knees Road intersection. The partial road closure removes the cut through vehicular traffic and alters the residents' car movements to roads that are de designed safe to carry peak <coughs> and emergency traffic and will ensure pedestrians' access is safe and available. The partial road closure 
is a wise 50k investment on a very short 425 metre road, which means Council can continue to spend their capital works budget on those priority areas, addressing things like open drains and footpaths in areas where there is high traffic or our highest primary school enrolments. The proposed partial road closure of Arundel Road West at Needs Road will not adversely impact traffic flows in the area, as this section of Arundel Road carries low traffic volumes and primary serves to provide access to abutting properties only and performs no strategic function in Council's road network. The intersection of Knees and Park Road um, has been widened to improve the capacity of the intersection Time. as this part of the road works. Can I move Time. a two-minute two extension? Two-minute extension of Councillor Stephen Main. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Laura Main, all those in favour? Carried. Councillor you. Lang, you have two minutes. Thank you. Um, I'll go back there that the intersection of Knees and Park Road has been widened to improve the capacity of the intersection as part of our current roadworks, which is only completed last week. And I must say, I already enjoyed the benefits of it and I look forward to the community also enjoying the benefits when school returns. The proposed road closure provides the, pro provides the Park Orchards community with a good safety mitigation great public value and amenity, with no adverse impacts on surrounding streets or intersections, with no negative emergency access movements, and a cost-effective solution with our ratepayers' money. Therefore, I urge my fellow councillors to support the motion to proceed with the partial road closure of Arundel Road West at Knees Road intersection. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Councillor Conlon. Could I reserve my right to speak, please? Yes, you may. Your right is reserved. Do I have any speakers against the motion? No speakers against the motion? Could I ask a question? You may ask a question. Just for clarification, uh, my understanding is that it w the intention of the officers is it will also allow articulated vehicles which includes uh, caravans and towed trailers to access Arundel Road through that intersection if it does go ahead. For you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Conlon. I'm going to refer that to uh, Mr Noel. Rochelle. Rochelle, Director of City Services. I've just got a blank on her and contract. And caravan parks. Quattrachi. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Councillor, for your question, Councillor Connellan. Um, just clarifying, yes, the design will accommodate articulated vehicles, which includes caravans and trailers, to give an example. Thank you. Fantastic. Would you like to speak? I'd like to speak. Councillor Conlon. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Lang. Um, I support this motion. I've been a little bit to and fro. I, I believe this is a much better uh, compromise than where we were a month ago. Sorry, two months ago it was actually. Um, and I think it's uh, a better outcome for the community because it does actually address a lot of the issues that were raised by the community uh, by partially closing the road and by allowing uh, trucks, uh, caravans, trailers and uh, garbage trucks, etc., emergency vehicles through the intersection. I think, as a result, I'm hoping that the community can, as, as Councillor Lang mentioned, uh, sort of the wounds will start to heal. But I do note um, there seems to be a lack of understanding amongst the community who don't live in that section of Arundel Road regarding the curb and channelling and the, I guess, the appearance of that road compared to the other end of Arundel Road, um, which is a historical thing where, as a result of a council special rates scheme, the residents of Arundel Road West um, paid for the lovely curb and channelling that they have down that street. And uh, as I understand it, there was a petition from the other end of Arundel Road at the time to not have that treatment. And thus, the, you get a very, uh, you know, from one side of the roundabout to the other, you get a very different appearance in the road. So it, 
but just to be clear, this is not favouritism. Um, that wasn't favouritism at the time. This is not favouritism. It's just that, w that was a reality of, of what the residents wanted at the time, and, um, and, and that's where we are. But I also note there seems to be a lack of understanding from the people who perhaps live in Arundel Road, and not just Arundel Road, actually. Across Manningham, I'd make the comment about what the purpose of the, the road reserve is for and who's responsible for um, maintaining it and what's allowed to be planted there, et cetera. So time. I, I... Sorry, time? time. I move a two-minute extension. Thank you. Councillor Stephen Main, extending for two minutes. Seconder, Councillor Laura Main. Do I... I'll put that to a uh, vote. All those in favour? Carried. Councillor Collin, you're given two more minutes. Thank you. Um, and I, I do think that... That part of that, yeah. I guess the the idea of a nature of a road reserve is it's for a lot of things. To provide a gap, a safe gap between uh, property boundaries and the road or the gutter, and also to provide pedestrian access. And I hope that uh, going forward, that all residents across Manningham, in particular, um, would understand that that is a requirement to keep that free of any tripping obstacles and, uh, and in fact, we're not even allowed to plant out our own nature strips, which is part of the policy, So, as, as I understand it. I'm happy to be uh, corrected on that. Uh, so, therefore, I support this, this motion. Thank you, Councillor Conlon. I'll put that then to a vote now. Those in favour? Um, I think... Uh, Am I allowed to close, Madam Mayor? Otherwise... You, you have... Oh, oh, actually... Well, no, a councillor can close without a, without a debate, okay. unless I do have now a speaker against. Oh. No? I was just going to speak for the motion. You would like to speak for the motion? I'll allow you to speak for the motion. Councillor De Monte. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so like Councillor Conlon said, I have actually been um, a around in my mind and speaking to the officers different options for this road and I, I think it's important that the community knows that this wasn't cut and dried. Um, we have looked at this short stretch of road, we've looked at traffic flow, we've looked at safety concerns, we've walked the road. When I walked the road with Councillor Lightbody we saw two young boys at the park road end and, and a car came quite close to them on their bikes. Um, we've experienced the tight bends and those blind spots. And, and I think it's really important to say, Madam Mayor, that, that the community consultation was really interesting and for those residents not living on Arundel Road West, there wasn't a high level of support for closing the road, but as a council we have to make decisions based on a variety of considerations and it's not just majority rules. And, and those considerations have to include safety as a priority. Um, and so for all of those reasons, I just thought it was important that I said that I do support this option. I, I have sympathy for other residents across across the um, park orchards that, that had used the road, but I do think it's the right solution for this. Thank you, Councillor Di Monte. No other speakers? Would you like to close, Councillor yeah, Lang? Please, you have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I also want to let the community know that um, the objections that we heard, we heard and considered, and therefore the partial road closure um, really um, was aimed to address those objection considerations, especially in regards to emergency access, so that residents can be reassured that um, the surrounding residents can ensure that emergen in emergency situations, the access will be maintained by the emergency services and the greater community. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is this decision was not made lightly. We have been in lots of consultation with the community, with officers, with us as councillors, and we are a strong governing body that ensures we are well informed and we are measured in our decision-making process. And consequently, tonight, we are coming back to the primary objective, which was the safety mitigation and addressing the through traffic. Therefore, I urge my fellow councillors to support the motion to proceed with the partial road closure of Arundel Road West 
at Nees Road intersection. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lang. I'll put that to a vote. Those in favour? That is unanimously carried. Thank you. Item 11.3, Road Management Plan Review and Adoption. Do I have a mover? I'll, uh, I move. Yep. Councillor Madam Lee. Mayor, I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Second Councillor Goff. Councillor Lang. Nothing further to add, Madam Thank Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Councillor Goff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I rise to speak for this motion. It really is. Uh, this is the second path of this uh, through council. It's gone out to public consultation. Uh, it's it's something I think we have to do as a council. Well, I think it's I think it's a Victorian Act somewhere, um, and uh, it compels us to actually uh, have have a uh, basic uh, plan, I suppose, on how we look after our roads in Manningham. Uh, it has gone out for public consultation. We did get some some. Uh, people responding to this, but in essence, their response uh, were outside the scope of, of what this actually was for. But I, I uh, would like to read uh, one of the, one of the uh, responses which really got my heart uh, and, and say, yes, you're right. And it said, your plan is, is a great start, but simple maintenance is also important. And, and then they go on about consulting with Vic Roads regarding the maintaining of the freeway and the amount of rubbish and weeds that grow is an eyesore. Also remove paint quickly. So they were putting out those things. Now, this particular um, document is about how, I suppose it's a, rec it's a register of all of our roads, uh, where they are, the status and the hierarchy of each of the roads. It's also, I suppose, uh, saying how we are dealing with managing uh, that asset across Manningham for Manningham's local roads. Now, not all of the roads that you see in Manningham, as you know, are Manningham's roads. Of course, some of the main roads, like um, uh, Doncaster Road and, uh, and uh, Thompson's Road and uh, Manningham Road and Blackburn Road, there are lots of roads around Manningham that are run by state government or you know, looked after by state government. And unfortunately, as I drive around those, I must see, I see weeds uh, three foot high and all the rest growing, growing really well in that. But this is about how we manage our assets. The regularity we go and do things, what we do, to what level we do. And this document actually is the instruction booklet for people that are operating in Manningham on what we need to do to reach the standards that we need to achieve uh, in looking after our roads. So it has been out, it's, it's come back, and uh, this is now our document uh, for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Any speakers against? I'm going to put that to a vote. I'd like to sum up. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm going to put that to a vote. Uh, all those in favour? Unanimously carried. Item 12, shared services. There are no uh, reports. Item 13, Chief Executive uh, Officer. 13.1, draft annual report, 2020-21. Do I have a mover? So moved, Mayor. Councillor Stephen Main. Do I have a seconder? I'll second that. Councillor Lightbody. Councillor Stephen Main. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So we're uh, approving the draft annual report uh, tonight, uh, I'd like to thank, start by thanking Jude Whelan and Kate Blair in particular, who've been the officers who've done the, the lion's share of the work. It is actually a very big job. I don't know if anyone's ever tried producing an annual report, but uh, something of this depth um, and detail it takes a lot of work. So well done to the officers. I think it's really well presented. Uh, it's got all the details. It's got an excellent summary of our, the final year of our 2017 to 21 four-year plan. It's got good detailed sections on the whole COVID response um, and a, a, I think an important summary on the deliberative engagement process we took under the new local government provisions to assist with the development of the new um, council plan. 
do quite like this well presented page on page 10 on the, the Manningham snapshot with 12,943 cats and dogs registered in the year, 10 kilometres of new and renewed footpaths, 55% of waste diverted from landfill, 25 kilometres of roads resurfaced, 1,012 births supported by our wonderful maternal child health centres, and a population which has hit 128,000. 929 so that's a big community that uh, that we are supporting so so well on to the officers I do love also the the unique Manningham disclosure where we disclose the the pay and contract details of our CEO and our senior directors uh, voluntarily it's been going on for a decade and it's a very honorably transparent um, voluntary disclosure that uh, we are continuing um, to do and uh, financially, I think it's reassuring to know that we're, we're in good shape. Um, we had a, ended up with a $29 million operating surplus, um, had a valuation, revaluation of our property up. So we've now got close to $1.80 but $80 million up, so close to $1.3 in in land alone. Um, and didn't quite get to our full capital works. We had a $3.92 million carryover, and we do have, as the annual report notes, so cash and investments of $88 million, which is set aside, uh, some, quite a bit of it restricted uh, to meet liabilities, but it's a healthy position in which we're also debt-free. So thanks again to the officers. It's a good read. I hope people take the time to read it. It's very informative. I don't think we're going to be uh, knocking over too many trees, uh, printing many. Uh, which is a good thing, uh, but it is available online. It does get the elevation of being presented formally to council and it is a well-presented document. So thanks again to the officers for putting it together. Thank you, Councillor Main. Councillor Lightbody? Nothing to add. Nothing to add. Any speakers against? Any other speakers for? Councillor Conlon? Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I'd like to just uh, point out that this is a a report of essentially the end of the previous council and I'd like to uh, just uh, thank uh, Councillor Paul McLeish, the Mayor at the time, Councillor Mike Zafiropoulos, Deputy Mayor AM, uh, Councillor Paula Piccinini, Councillor Sophie Galbally and Councillor Dot Haynes for their contribution, as well as my fellow councillor, my fellow councillors here, Councillor Alan Chen, Councillor Jeff Goff and Councillor Michelle Kleiner and myself. And I, uh, I, I commend this uh, report to the council and thank those councillors for their work. Thank you, Councillor Conlon. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Unanimously carried. Item 13.2, Draft Chief Executive Officer Employment and Remuneration Policy. Do I have a mover? I'd like to move that the recommendation be adopted. Councillor Conlon, seconder? A seconder. Councillor Diamonti, Councillor Conlon? Nothing to add. Councillor Diamonti? Any other speakers? I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Unanimously carried. Thank you. Item 13.3, Councillor Committee and Chairperson appointments for 2022. Do I have a mover? No, no. Councillor Stephen Main, seconder? I second the motion. Councillor Carly Lang. Councillor Stephen Main. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So, um, yeah, at the end of each year, uh, Council uh, reviews its committee appointments and chair appointments. And this year we made a change, whereas we didn't do any tweaks to the committee personnel uh, at the same time as we selected the Mayor and voted on the Mayor at the annual meeting. We delayed it for a month. Um, Two or for three weeks to allow it to be slightly more considered. Um, and I think it was good because it meant that the new mayor is able to lead the process. I'd like to thank Councillor Kleinert uh, for her uh, leadership in consulting with the councillors. Um, there haven't been a, a lot of wholesale changes, which is probably a good thing. You don't want to be one year into a council term and be recasting your committees uh, dramatically. Uh, but there's 19 appointments in total uh, outlined or 19 committees. There's a, there's a couple of little tweaks. We've decided to add a third member to um, the audit committee. There's still only one committee where all nine councillors are on it, and that's making sure that everyone's keeping an eagle eye on the CEO, on the CEO Performance Committee. Uh, some are automatically the mayor, so um, there's a switch over there with the change of mayor, such as the grants panel, and there's one of the two councillors on the Eastern Region grouping, along with the new deputy mayor, uh, Councillor Diamante. Some of the appointments make natural geographical sense. Uh, if you look at our single ward model, such as Councillor Lang representing 
Um, our country elements uh, in the Yarra Ward is therefore the natural member of the emergency management, uh, given that we're not expecting too many bushfires down in Councillor Goff's ward in Bolan, in, in Bulleen. Um, I'll leave it to others to, to mention some of the other tweaks, the committees in, involving them, but I do think it was... Uh, um, it was a good process, which I hope we continue with to, to have a slightly more considered process and to be less uh, rushed. We don't have as many committees as some, and, and so I think uh, we don't overdo it, uh, but we do have, I think, a good blend, and, uh, and it's been a good process. And I'd like to thank, I think, Andrew McMaster as well and, and Carrie at the officer level for assisting in the, the administration behind the, the formulation of this, uh, this report and the final decisions. So thank you all. Thank you, Councillor Main. Councillor Lang. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Stephen Main did an excellent job of summarising it. The only thing I wanted to add was the fact that um, I really appreciated the way that we're looking at the appointments of councillors in committees and versus having one one year and one the next, having a transition phasing process where we're looking at if there's a new councillor wanting to come in, coming in for a year and then um, a phase process of somebody going out but stepping down from a position. And I just think that's um, good governance and also gives people to learn the ropes and understand where the history of the committees have gone because that's important too, to take them forward. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Lang. Any speakers against? Any other speakers? Councillor Lightbody. Yeah, I think this is fantastic how we've um, sorted out all these uh, committees for the coming year, but I would also like to note that there are still some appointments left to come on new committees that will be starting up next year, including a gender equality and LGBTIQA plus advisory committee, as well as a multicultural communities com committee as well. So I look forward to those being established. Thank you, Councillor Lightbody. Any other speakers? Well, let's put that to a vote. All those in favour? Unanimously carried. 13.4, Manningham Quarterly Report, quarter one, July to September 2021. Do I have a mover? I move that the recommendation be adopted. Councillor Laura Main. Do I have a seconder? Second, Councillor Stephen Main. Councillor Laura Main. Thanks, Mayor. This report, um, this report provides a brief overview of our key reporting requirements for our finance, capital works and corporate performance for the year July, September, for July to September this year, um, with the revised version including more on our developer contributions to provide more transparency, um, more performance reporting on consumer and community engagement and more information about our preparation for additional capital works in the next quarter. At the end of September, Council was 2.7% favourable compared to last year. We're, gener we're generally favourable in areas such as grants, employee costs, materials and, contra and contracts, and other operating expenses such as school crossings, as you can understand with the impacts of lockdown, and then less favourable in areas such as rental fees, legal and governance memberships, and statutory charges such as less parking infringements. Also, as you can understand, an impact of lockdown. Um, there's been a total of 5 million capital expenditure this quarter, equating to 8.5% of our total budget, with 75 of our 161 capital works already have begun, 82 yet to start, and four which have been delayed or incomplete. Um, and again, a lot of our capital works ex um, execution obviously impacted by the effects of lockdown restrictions. In the, er in the area of, cus of customer service, there's been 36,513 calls during this period and 21,000 new customer requests. So I'd just like to thank our customer service staff for their work, um, with these requests mostly being related to rates, as you would expect, um, as well as hard rubbish, tree maintenance, animals, etc. All topics I definitely hear about from the community, though we should, noted that, should be noted that we're working on three major initiatives to improve customer service. So I'd just like to thank the officers for their work, including John Gorse in finance area and Georgina for the redesign. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Laura Maines. Councillor Stephen Main? Nothing to add. Nothing to add. Do I have any speakers against? Any other speakers? I'm going to put that... To... Sorry, it was just the look. <laughs> I'll put that to a vote. Those in favour? Unanimously carried. Sorry, Councillor DeMonte, it's just the way you turn, so I was just checking. 
Um, item 13.5, informal meeting of councillors. Mover. Councillor like, De Monte. I'd like to move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. A seconder. I'll second that. Councillor Lightbody. Councillor Di Monte. Councillor Light. Uh, sorry, Councillor Di Monte. Was a no. Sorry. Councillor Lightbody. No, thank you. Nothing. Any speakers against? Let's put that to a vote. All those in favour? Unanimously carried. Item 14, urgent business. There are no items of urgent business. Item 15, councillor reports and question time. Councillors, anyone wish to provide a report or raise a question? Councillor Lang. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have two um, reports. Um, councillors, I just wanted to let you know and um, see if you're aware that our Warrandyte Cricket Club made Channel 9 News this month. Um, as the heading or slogan, there's a place for everybody at Warrandyte Cricket Club. The Warrandyte Cricket Club was established in 1955 as one of the oldest cricket clubs in Victoria. The club has had a long and proud history and is committed to providing a safe, friendly environment for the community to participate at the club, either as a player, a family member or supporter. The Warrandyte Cricket Club has 30 teams this season the Junior Blast team, with the youngest member being five. Five to eight is the age range for the Blast program. 15 junior teams, with a dedicated girls under 15s team. Eight senior men's teams, a senior men's, men's T20, a social women's T20, and as Channel 9 News put it, the famous four veteran teams, an over 40s, an over 50s, an over 60s, and for the first time ever, an over 70s. The veteran competition is very important, particularly for the older guys. Not just for physical activity, but also for social connection, camaraderie and mental health. It has been described as the men shed on grass. Councillors, our news report reported on Channel 9 News that Warren Diet's youngest member was five and their oldest member was 78. There truly is a place for everybody at Warrandyte Cricket Club. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Councillor Lightbody. Yep. I would just like to note that last night um, we had our last meeting of the Access and Equity Committee after it sunsetted earlier this year. And I would like to thank and acknowledge everyone that has been on that committee, both members of the committee, councillors chairing it, and the officers over the past years where it's been run. And I look forward to the next iteration of interacting with these communities, which is through the establishment of the two new committees I mentioned in the last item, <laughs> as well as the already running Disability Advisory Committee and the about to start Youth Advisory Committee. And I hope that we continue to hear from and see all the members who have participated in the Access and Equity Committee in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lightbody. Councillor Diamonti. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So um, I just want to let the community and my fellow councillors know that today I attended a flag raising ceremony at Warrandyte Police Station where three, all fleet three flags, the Australian flag, Aboriginal flag and Torres Strait Islander flags were raised simultaneously by three young Aboriginal women. And, and this event was very significant as Victoria Police strengthens its its relationships with the local First Nations communities. And I very much like to acknowledge and, um, and thank Victoria Police for this initiative, as well as Sergeant Stuart Henderson, who was the officer in charge at Wyandyte Police Station for a really respectful and authentic and, and lovely ceremony in speaking at the event as the Deputy Mayor, I, I noted that it is a privilege to live, work and play on the land of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people. And it is an integral part of Manningham's rich diversity. And noted that as a council, we're looking forward to furthering our partnerships, relationships with First Nations people and promoting the powerful message of reconciliation. Thank you, Councillor Diamonti. Councillor Chen. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I'm a council rep at the Metropolitan Transport Forum. 
And uh, Metro, uh, the MTF recently held a second bus forum on Zoom on the 18th of October with Municipal Association of Victoria that we always call it as MAV. The forum invited Naomi Landon, Director on Road Transport Planning at the Department of Transport to speak about the newly uh, released Victorian bus plan. There were also sessions on transitioning to electronic buses and on demand responsive buses uh, transit in Roeville. And I facilitated the bus advocacy panel discussion and the representatives are from Wyndon, Monitor Peninsula Shire and City of Greater Dandenong gave presentations on their advocacy campaign success stories and answer questions as well. Um, because it is likely that we are going to have state and federal elections in 2022, so NTF may held another bus forum in 2022, and there may be opportunities to promote public, more public transport at the both, uh, at both elections. So anyone uh, interested in the bus forum can go to ntf.org.au to watch the video presentations and slides. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Councillor Lang. She has no Thank second you. go, is it? She can have a second go, yeah. Oh. Thank you, no, Madam Mayor. It's not allowed. Sorry, let me get clarity on that. Maybe you are correct. That's two minutes, two minutes. Madam Mayor. Otherwise, we're going to be sitting you here have another, all night. It has another signal. two minutes, correct? No. Oh, two minutes in total. You probably got 30 seconds, Councillor Lang. Councillors, I just want to bring to your awareness that over the Remembrance Day, our Manningham Young Diggers assistance dog, Zeus, ran a sausage sizzle at the young diggers, for the Young Diggers at Warrandyte Quinton's um, IGA raising $380 donation to support our veterans of Australia Defence Force, of first respondents, our emergency services and their family. These donations will help assistant dog advice and training. Council has, it has been a challenging time getting through COVID and it's those who are not travelling so well in the world that our assistance dog Zeus and his trusty veteran liaison Don Hughes are training and part of members of Young Diggers. These squads have returned in Brisbane, Melton, Melbourne and Tamworth. Council, I'd like to take this opportunity to gratefully thank our volunteers, trainers and fundraisers who work with an enormous heart to support Young Digger me members. Their slogan is, together we heal. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Very hard to stop the 30 seconds on a very important issue. 38 seconds, so I gave you the eight seconds, but it was worth it. <laughs> Apologies, um, Councillor Stephen Lang, you have something to uh, report? So, goodness. I'd be happy to marry <laughs> Councillor Lang. Um, <laughs> Councillor Stephen Main. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to note that uh, this is the first meeting with our new meeting procedures. Uh, so I'm allowed to sit as I say these words, whereas previously uh, we weren't. Um, we had a councillor who was allowed to close a motion tonight when there wasn't a speaker against, which I think was, was good. Um, we had a councillor reserve a right to speak later on, which is a, a new provision, which was Councillor Conlon. Um, and we've now had five councillors not having to frame this as is the Mayor aware under our old model where this item was questions only and that we've now moved to questions and reports. So you can just sensibly inform colleagues or the community um, about something which might have happened in your patch and I think it's been really interesting hearing tonight and I think this liberalisation um, has been a, a healthy thing. So the one little thing I was going to update on was that uh, 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 Rochelle Quattrocchi and I had a, 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 an interesting meeting with the delegation from Templestowe College last week. They have aspirations to uh, develop a basketball facility on their oval uh, to support their, um, um, their elite basketball program. Um, they've got 100 kids of their 1,250 have come from all over Melbourne to be in their elite basketball program, uh, which is run by Ian Stacker, who was the former head of basketball, men's basketball, elite basketball at the AIS. Um, and so it's one of the four or five... Uh, schools in Melbourne offering this elite basketball. So 
it's obviously a, a big proposal. They've got ambition uh, that needs state government support, but it was interesting to learn about the fact that the school is booming from a numbers point of view and that it has this elite basketball program which is absolutely bringing kids from all over the, all over the place such that they have a capacity issue um, and are ex thinking about some early concept plans about potentially uh, um, building some basketball courts on their existing oval. So uh, it was an interesting uh, presentation and we'll s uh, see how the school goes in, uh, in getting support from the state government and other important stakeholders. Thank you, Councillor Stephen Main. Fantastic. Go to... Item 16, confidential reports, and there aren't being no confidential reports, I declare the meeting closed.